que eu tenho que ser o Vitor. About two more minutes, we'll start. We're about to begin. Uh, say shalom if you guys are on, and let's get this party started. This party started. As you can see, um, got me a haircut. Keep it short. It's not all the way off for all you people that say, "Oh, you cut your hair." More of the corners of your beard. No, it's still here. It's still here, buddy. So, um. With all that said and being done, let's get it. Welcome. Say shalom if you guys are on. I can't see who's on. Who's not on? Welcome to True Hebrews. Let's, let's see. 
digs in the dirt so it doesn't stay level. Welcome to True Hebrews United. Lord Yeshua. It should be loved. Holiness instructor, discipleship of Joe Sarge. About to get into the book as usual. Definitely give all honor to Yah through his son Yeshua Mashiach. Definitely uh, double honor to the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, the deacons. Getting that word out there in the trenches, trying to save people's souls while it's still time. All the brothers and sisters being the light of the world, keeping his commandments, statutes, judgment, precepts, and ways. All the people that share, like, follow, subscribe, comment, the videos. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Even you guys that have questions and call. Appreciate you guys, people that answer the phone calls. Appreciate you guys. I love you guys. If you guys got questions, please hit me up. I'm always willing to fellowship and be a blessing as well. You're a blessing to me. It gives me much joy to see that people still to this day is still trying to hold a standard to live holy and give their life to the most high. You know, we see um, we see it. It's harder and harder to find people actually living holy and living righteous or have the want to be completely right with the most high and not have a statue of limitations, you know, with the most high, you know, so definitely appreciate that. So we're going to get into the book. I'm going to hit with a couple of scriptures and I'm going to do some topics as well. So let's go, hold, go ahead and uh, hit it with uh, Proverbs 20. Proverbs 20. Proverbs 20. And we're going to start at verse 29. Proverbs 20, verse 29. And it goes, the glory of a young man is their strength and the beauty of an old man is gray hair, gray head. So it says the glory of a young man is his strength. You know, obviously, no, we, uh, oh, let's let the fingers do the walking and the scriptures do the talking. That's right. So, um, you know, the glory of a young man and even a woman, you know, your figure, your skin's tight, your, you know, your paps are perky, hips. You know, pokey, everything on pokey. And, uh, you know, the same thing with the women. Uh, so I'm going to hit another scripture. So the glory of the young man, I'm just laying the foundation right now. So let's get with Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. It says, Rejoice, young man, or it could be woman, in thy youth, and let thy heart uh, cheer thee in the days of thy youth. So be happy when you're young and walk in the ways of thy heart and in the sight of thy eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring thee to judgment. So, you know, and like, don't go off to sin, though. So, you know, Ecclesiastes is about Solomon saying he went off to, and he committed a whole bunch of things that was unright, too. He did vanity, things that were vanity, things that were sinful, and he lived righteous. And he came to the collusion, fear the Almighty, and keep his commandments. So, also it says, enjoy your youth while you're young. But check this out, verse 10. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. From childhood and youth are vanity. Verse 12. Remember now the Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, and the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And now that can mean many things, but it also can mean that, um, you know, man, my back's not the same. My hip's not the same. Man, I can't sleep right, man. I think I slept wrong. The kid, they'd be in a car seat just like this for like three hours and they wake up like ready to go. You know, you sleep like this just for 15 minutes and then you like, ah, oh, man, there might come a time where you have no pleasure in your body. Like, man, I don't got no pleasure in my back, man. My back's been killing me for the last three years, man. I got to take the Tylenol every day or something like that. You know, I got to ice it down or, you know, so it says, enjoy your youth. You only have a certain amount of good years and you could extend that with herbal medicine and eat and right and diet. And you could keep your youth and, you know, serving the almighty living righteous actually helps you keep keeps you young, too, because it's less stress and it's less. You're not putting alcohol and poisons in your body. And if you serve the almighty, you're going to veer towards Hellenistic and you're going to veer towards taking care of your temple. Uh, so it's just going to be a healthy. It's kind of like being a bodybuilder and watching your diet they kind of it's kind of like losing weight and healthy eating they kind of go hand in hand so serve the almighty and healthy habits to people that's really trying to walk circumspectly uh they go hand in hand to to some degree 
So I'm going to hit you with one more scripture. So right here it says, enjoy your youth while you got it. Ecclesiastes chapter 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 6. And we're going to start verse 3. This isn't uh, verse 3. It says, if a man have beget a hundred children and live many years so that the days of his years be many and his souls and his soul be not filled with good and also that he have no burial. I say that an untimely birth is better than he. And what he's saying is, what is the purpose of living a long time? If it's full with travail, with bitterness, with frustration, with depression, you only have a certain amount of time of good years. And, and I, this applies to everything. So yesterday we dealt with stress. We dealt with stress. And this ties on to now you only have a certain amount of good years. Let's say 16 to 50, right? 45, 50, then stuff stops, you know, maybe you're not eating right and stuff's not working the same, your harm, carpet's tunnel, whatever, stuff starts slowly setting in, right? So if you only have a certain good years, why do you give up your good years to things that hold no value? And that's what I'm getting at. This also ties into stress. For me to work at a job that I do not like for 10 years, and be stressed under a manager that talks condescending to me and belittles me. I'm giving him my good years. I'm letting this man take my joy for 40 hours a week. And I and by the time I retire, this man took all of my good years away. I'll use another example. There was a man that he worked for a company and he ended up getting laid off for a company uh, before his retirement. A new CEO came in. He got laid off. This is a true story. He got laid off before he could get his retirement. So uh, what he did is he started his own business because he knew. But when he was 19 years old, he worked there 20, 25 years, but he he, didn't, he was short of to get retirement. Uh, so they laid him off probably so he couldn't get his retirement. What he did is he started his uh, own business, but he forgot. Uh, he put a, a no co compete co cause in the contract. So the new CEO sued him, took his house, took his boat, took everything he had. The company that laid him off and he worked there 25 years because he started his own business and he couldn't collect retirement from this company. They sued him and took everything he he purchased during that time he worked there from 19 years old to 45 something, whatever. They took everything. So now he's left with nothing. They took all of his good years when he worked for them, and then they took everything he, he he gained from that. And that goes to show us we only have a small span on this earth, some shorter, some longer than others, but we only have good years. Um, there was a man that it actually made me want to be a better husband. Is, uh, he ended up cheating on his wife, and his wife uh, left him. And went to just gave him the kids and just bounced. You take the kids, you take everything. I want to go back. And she wanted to go back to her youth. She wanted to go back to Dayton and freedom. She didn't even want to get stuck with the kid. And she said something that ministered to me. She said to the dude, she said, you took away my good years. I invested all my good years when my, my, my boobs were perky, my hips, and I had no stretch marks from kids. I invested all my good years in you just for you to do me wrong. I'm going to go make up those good years. And so she went out into fornication, dated guys, whatever. She just went out and not super whore, but she went out to live life. And that's that showed me like, hey, you know what? How much tears have I caused my wife? How much pain or how much frustration or how much have I took from her, her 20s and her 30s? You know what I'm saying? And it's like she only has a few amount of good years and I only have a few amount of good years. So she shouldn't let me take her good years away. If if I get to the point to where I'm not pushing joy and making her happy, then she needs to do what she needs to do to be happy. She needs to have self-respect for herself and do what she needs to do. And, and, and it goes vice versa. And it goes to you guys. Part of stress is you got to realize that, you know what, time is ticking. 
And I don't want to be in the str- I don't want to fill my life full of travail. I only have a certain amount of youth and I only want to invest my youth, my good years, my best years in the things that's going to be edifying to myself. Um, let's say if you went, someone gave you twenty, thirty thousand dollars and said, you got to go to five places on this planet. And you went to, you know, Singapore, you went to Japan, you went to, you know, Stonehenge, you went to the pyramids, whatever. Right. And you're 20, you're 30, you're 40 and you enjoyed it. Now, let's say you're going when those old couples go when they're 85. Do you think they're going to enjoy it as much when they're 85? Are they going to enjoy it more when they're 35 or 40 or in their 20s? And that's to say, like, hey, you know, our time is small. So hit it. This is why Ecclesiastics, the Almighty says, whatever you do, do with your whole heart. You know, I try to be the best provider and I try to build the best dynasty I can with the time I have for my sons and my daughters. So when I'm old and I say, hey, this is I, I started from scratch. I didn't get much help. I went through people on the job. I went through letdowns. I went through obstacles. This is what I was able to achieve. Now build on that. Build on top of that. Use this as a foundation and you do greater. You do three or four times greater. If I've paved the way. I flattened the ground. Now you just need to build the house. I spent my whole life flattening this mountain so you could build. Now the hard part is done. Now just run and go. Double, triple. Because I paid the way. And this is kind of what Ecclesiastes is saying. Hey, you know what? I labor under the sun all day. Who's to know if my son's going to be wise or foolish? This is vanity. What's the point? He might blow it away. And I've seen people. There is a man. And I'm, I'm going to bring this back to your good years. There is a man that uh, one of the guys I work with, his dad left him two houses, two houses in the Bay Area. So those houses are worth like, probably like 1.5 million each. And he left his daughter. He only had two kids, but he was able to achieve four houses. And he left his son and his daughter two houses. It's just them two. He does nothing. He takes days off because he rents one. He lives in one. He, he's not trying to buy another house. He's not trying to do anything with this not having to pay rent. He blows his money on knife, knife things. He does nothing. It's such a shame that your dad labor. And he always say, thank you, father. Like his father made it into the kingdom, which he's probably sleeping, waiting for judgment, but whatever. Um, and if you're thankful, build upon that, build a dynasty for your sons, build a dynasty. What are you going to leave your kids? Just the same two houses. So you just wasted, you just leased off your dad's hard labor. This is why Ecclesiastes Solomon said, this is, this is vanity, this vexation of the spirit. So my main point dealing with stress, and we're going to get with dealing with overcomer because stress brings this as n not letting stress take away your good years. Strive to do better. Strive to do better. Um, I'm trying to think of some examples of how maybe you guys could write something in there or let's i'll use a marriage as an example let's say if let's say if you're in this relationship don't even have to be marriage you're in this relationship and you see that the future is not looking bright it is better for you to spend the rest of your years in peace and enjoy and happiness to yourself than to stay in a miserable marriage. And I was dealing with stress, but this goes hand in hand. At the end of the day, you have to have self-respect and dignity and not let these people take your good years away. Because once they let you take your 20s, your 30s, and your 40s, then what's next? And some of you women out there, you're going to have to settle. Well, let you get 50 years old. How much? Look at how many guys get at you in your 20s and your 30s versus your 40s and 50s. And then you let this knucklehead that didn't really care about being a good husband or whatever, take all your youth away. Just take that time, that time you could invest in someone that will treat you right, that will make you happy, that will do the right thing, that will do right by you or that job that will uh, treat you right. It could just be a job, you know, oh, well, you know, I don't want to and bounce on that job, man. Remember, we're just here to get out of Babylon. You people that's watching, get your chips and get gone. Don't get don't get fall in love with those job, even if the employees might like you. But if the company, especially if it's a franchise, they don't care if it's corporate. 
at the end of the day, that's why they have HR. They call it human resource. You're just a resource to them. Just like oil, just like gas, just like whatever, silver, gold, it's just resources. You're just human resource. It's a shame that they call it that. You're just a resource. And so just use them as a resource. This is just a way, it means to me to extract money. This is like an oil. You know what I'm saying? I'm extracting money out of this company. I got to work to get oil out of the ground. I'm working for this company to extract money from this company. And just treat it as that. They're just a resource to you. And get your money and get gone. Um, we're going to deal with being an overcomer. But I really want to push that. Think about some of you guys. A lot of you guys that listen to me is under 40. They're in your 40, under 50. In your 40, 50s, your 30s, you're young. And you could still be young. I've seen some nice looking women when they're 50 and 60. You know, early 50, early 60s. But they, they be in the gym. They look clean, right? Clean, clean, like marriage ready look clean clean so but i'm saying that like hey look what you're investing in whether it's job whether it's a career anything don't let these people places and things take your youth don't let them take your good years that's why i don't play you know i don't play I, side note you women out there get into the gym start you're only going to look super clean for so long it's harder for you guys to fight gravity it will take more energy for this skin right here to get saggy, right? Because I go to the gym, it'll take more energy for that to get saggy than for your guys' boobs to get saggy. It'll take more energy for this to get saggy than for you guys to get the side or forget the back fat. You women out there, you guys got to stay in shape. You only have a good couple of years of where you're going to look your best. So look your best as long as you can. Be the brightest flower and the prettiest rose as long as you can. Because there's going to time where you're going to say, I have no pleasure in it. There may come a time where Simon's like, man, I can't even go to the gym no more. Man, every time I go to the gym, I get hurt. And I hope that does not happen because I literally want to be able to hit at least 225 on the bench with my grandson. When he's like 16, 17, I'll be able to push with my grandson and show him the things of weights and get him right, get him looking tight. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I want to be in the gym until I die. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. I want to be strong. I want to be fit. I do not want to be a 70, 80 year old that cannot ride a bike, that cannot swim, can't do nothing, just stay at the home, walking in a little walker and whatnot. Those are usually the people that do not exercise and do not uh, strive for better. You know what I'm saying? You women out there, you only have a couple of good years. If you're married, that's cool. Stay the apple of your eye as long as you can for your husband. Some of you women out there that want to be the only wife because you can have more than one, but most of you guys can't afford more than one. But that's another subject. If you're going to let yourself go, you're only going to make other women look more pretty. And if a person has a mindset they have more than one wife, no matter how pretty you look, it doesn't matter. You could be a dime piece. If there's a dime piece woman out there that looks super good and their man will still cheat on them because they just like variety. It's nothing. You know, it's not saying your looks alone will keep a man and your conversations and how good you cook. You know, if a man has the heart to commit adultery, he'll he'll cheat on you with the uglier girl than 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 you like with some just because it's variety and it's new and something never tried before, whatever. You know, what I'm saying if it's in their heart or, you know, but I'm saying, hey, be the best you could be for your husband. Be the best you could be for yourself because you only have a certain amount of good years. And if you spend the majority of your good years just letting yourself go, then what kind of life is that? Then you're just going to get worse and worse and worse. And then you're going to get depressed because, oh, well, some of you, some of you women out there, let's say you single woman out there. Let's say you're like a, a seven, an average, you, you know, you, you look pretty. You're someone will marry you. You look, you know, you're, you're a decent woman. You're not ugly and you're not like super dime piece. You're right at your level. You're a C. You're passing. You're good. Someone would date you or holler at you. You know what I'm saying? But you could be an eight and an eight and a half if you just go to the gym. You know what I'm saying? You could you could you could jump a couple of notches just by going to the gym and exercising and looking. And then what does that do? That gives you the ability to appeal to a class that normally won't. Uh, men will sleep down. I, I, as a man, I will sleep with a girl that I will not marry. But men will not marry down. They're going to wh who they marry. They're going to marry someone equal or greater. They're not going to marry down. They'll sleep down. They'll, ch they'll sleep with an ugly woman. They'll sleep with a woman that they just don't want to be seen in public. They'll sleep down, but they will not marry down. So if you could bump yourself up a couple of notches, hey, 
as much as you say, oh, they should look at the inward person. I get it. But men are visual. This is period. They see something. They see something. And then they want that number. They, they, they there's going to be a sexual attraction. And then they talk to you. Then they see if they're compatible because you could be pretty, but you can't cook or you have you dumb as a brick. And I, I don't want to marry that. Oh, you get your, your whole family. You're bipolar. You're uh, I'm staying far away from you. You crazy in the head. But if you're compatible, then cool. So you women out there, bring yourself up a notch. You men out there, low ambition. It, it is rooted in men. And I'm, we're dealing with good years. Women have to be gold diggers to some extent. And I'm not saying a gold digger by I'm just going to marry. But if I was a woman and I'm looking for a mate and I'm looking for the best mate that could raise my offspring, my children, I do not want to marry someone that has no ambition to make more money. I do not want to subject put my kids in subject to living paycheck to paycheck where we cannot take them on a vacation, where we cannot pay for them to go to college, where we cannot pay to just drive them to a better educational school, where they have to go to the grimy schools, where we have to have all three kids live in a two-bedroom house. It's five of us, and, we, and we, two of us married, and we got three kids, and we're in a two-bedroom because we cannot afford to do better for our children. That just makes no sense as a woman. She's looking for someone that has a future that has ambition and goals. They may not be there yet, but they have goals and visions to do better. It's nothing wrong for a woman to, to some extent, be a goal. Most gold diggers will just date you simply for that car. It has nothing to do with he'll make a good father or that he'll provide. He, oh, I could sue him and get alimony. Uh, I could just have a kid with them so I could leave them and get child support. That's like a true gold digger. I'm talking about the average woman that's looking. Dude, this man needs to be a good leader. So you men out there, while you're young, the scripture says, if you do nothing when you're young, what do you expect when you're old? If you don't apply yourself now to making money, because it says money is a defense and building some kind of portfolio. Uh, right now, I could leave and no, it's not much. I could leave this union. I'm in this union. But if I left after two years, I could collect fifty thousand dollars. And I just have that to decipher. That's not including my pension when I get fifty five, what I get every month. But that's just a 401A, 401K, whatever. That's 50,000 bucks. So if I just left the union for two years, I got 50,000 coming to me. So I say that you need to establish this stuff now. And yeah, because I don't really put nothing in the market. I could have done more, but this economy is going to crush. So I'm thinking about getting out of Babylon. That's why I'm not putting nothing in it. It's just growing on itself. I'm not investing in that. I don't believe in the 401K. If you if I got it, they put money in it and it still grows. But uh, my whole thing is being out of this country. I don't plan to retire here. I don't plan doing that. But you men out there, don't waste your good years playing around. You have a certain amount of good years. While you could go hard, don't waste it playing around. If you want a good, some of you, especially some of these Hebrew churches, you, these men want to, they want them to be a virgin. They want them to be a dime piece. They want all this stuff, but you have a, you ain't even, you, you barely cut for a one bedroom and you want all this. You barely even sur surviving yourself. Some of you guys aren't even equipped to, for one wife. And then the one wife you want, you want her to bring all this to the table and you're bringing barely, barely scraping and paycheck to paycheck. Like I said, if you can't save a hundred bucks a week, which, you know, depending on your situation, we're trying to get out of Babylon. So we're going to be broken until houses are built and businesses are set up. Our money is in, in building a house and whatnot. We're trying to get stuff done, but we always try to keep stuff on the side for emergency. But if you're not putting a hundred bucks a week on the side, then what are you doing? You're not even keeping up with inflation. So you men out there, hey, you're burning your good years playing around with these garbage jobs. You're burning your good years, not applying yourself to further education. If you could go back and say, hey, if I could go back to high school, if I could go back 10 years ago, I would have made better decisions. So you realize that the knowledge you have now, if you apply that 10 years ago, you could have been better off now. But you have that knowledge now, so apply it now and be better off 10 years in the future. And see, they're just like, man, if I could go back, well, do it now. You have all this knowledge now and you choose not to apply it. And so now your future's just shot. Your future's shot. Some of you women out there, 
you with the dude, and I feel for you. You with the dude that they don't. There, there's no ambition. There's no drive. It's almost like this society. And I know I've, I've used some scriptures. I didn't use too much, but these couple of days I want to really deal with some. It's almost like. This society in America has stripped the testosterone and the manliness out of the man. Like, there's no drive to do better every year. So many men are content with just making the same amount of money, staying at this job, letting them dictate when they give a raise, letting them dictate when you retire, how much you get when you retire. You're banking on your Social Security. Who? Why do you... Why do you let them decide when you're 18 and they say, hey, if you work at this job or you're 25, you work at this job, you can retire at 55. And then at 62, you could get unemployment. So you let them set your destiny. Just think about it. Isn't the name of the game to retire as fast as possible for me? OK, I'll be at this job. But on the side, I'm keeping my eyes up. If I find something that pays more, if I find something I could do on the side, my goal is to retire as fast as possible. Not no 55, not no 45 as as fast as I could get, because I want to chill and kick it as fast as possible. If I set myself up, invest in some stocks, invent something, start my own business, do something Start a business where I have employees. Yeah, I may not be retired, but I just come monitor things and I chill back and money's making itself and I can have compound money just working for itself, making more money, invest in apartments, rent stuff. I just chill back. Yeah, I got to fix a water heater there, fix roof here, but I have rental properties. I rent out apartments and I just chill back and live life and let the chips just come. I'm pretty much retired. Ain't that the name of the game? But no, nah, like these men are like, oh, I'll just work this job and, you know, I just got to do. Like I'm in the union. I have 20 more years before I before I can retire. Am I good? for 20 years? That means for 20 years, I can't apply myself. I make pretty good money. I don't like telling how much because they're going to look at me. People look at me when I said tell them how much I make. They look at me weird. So I don't. But I'm, I'm not hurting. I'll say that I'm not hurting. I'm not hurting. You know what I'm saying? I'm not ball. I'm a baller on a budget. I'll say that. So. But I'm not going to let 20 years of me just sitting back and collecting when you decide when I get a raise and when you decide I retire. I'm not going to let you burn up my years waking up, listening to loud noises, doing construction. Man, that's not appealing to me. I'm trying to retire. If I could retire tomorrow uh, and I was straight and my family was straight and I could build houses for my family and do things, then I'm going to do it. I'm going to use my good years and apply myself. So then when I get old, if I failed myself, then at 55, I could look back to what the union gets me. Okay, at this union, I'll get 6000 a month. And then I have probably maybe 100, 200, maybe 100, 150,000 to 401k that I could pull out in one lump sum that probably tax me 30%. So I get 100,000 in my bank, in my pocket. And then I got $6,000 coming. And that sounds nice to some people. That's what would happen if I stayed at this union and I waited to 55. But that don't have to be my destiny. Why is that my limit? Why is that the best I could possibly be? So I'm going to say that's the best. Well, you get $6,000 a month. And by the time your 401A grows, you'll probably have 100000 So you could, when you were 55, you could pull out your 100000 and you can have $6,000. That's pretty good, Simon. No, that's not good. I'm not letting you dictate my destiny. I dictate my destiny. That's, 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 the, whole, my, that's the whole thing behind it. Th these men. Wasting your good years simply because you don't apply yourself. You're only young. You have energy. You have go get. You have hustle. Hit it hard. You know what I'm saying? Go hard. You women out there, if your husband is slipping or slacking on their job or your job is a dead end job and you're in a cul de sac job, switch jobs. If you got to invest two hours of study in a night, whatever you got to do to make more money, if you could get, if you could, hey, if I invest and, and I go to night school, Right. And I just do two hours a day. And normally I could get done in three months, but it's going to take me nine months. But in nine months. I could get this job that pays 15 more dollars an hour. Or these nine months, I could do absolutely nothing and stay living paycheck to paycheck. I could suck it up for nine months, go to school, get this degree, get this certificate, get whatever and get a job that pays 15, 20 dollars more. I could suck it up and do uh, uh, school for a whole year and then a whole year I just suck it up and then I get 20 dollars more, 30 dollars more. I could, you know, whatever. Or I could just do nothing. Or expect just 
Do not waste your good years. You women out there, especially if you have a husband that don't have ambition, he had ambition, but somehow he got complacent. I see where they get complacent. A, a minister that I've seen, a powerful minister. Next thing you know, man, he's talking, he's cussing now. Uh, this other man, man he lost, man. He, he smokes weed now. He says, man, I ain't even going to lie. Out of his own mouth, I've seen a service. I haven't seen him in a years. Seen a service. He's like, yeah, you know, weed for the medicinal. I ain't even going to lie. I don't do it just for the medicinal. I do it for the effect. And then the whole church start giggling and whatnot. It was a church I used to go to. I love that minister. And he said, yeah, man, I get tired and I just want to blaze one. So this minister went from preaching against weed, which he should have, to where now he's condoning and saying he don't even use it for medicinal reason. He just use it for the effect because he's tired. And he wants something that could just put him to sleep. Like, man, that's sad. They get complacent. And you get married with someone that gets complacent. They get complacent with they don't want to love you. They don't want to treat you right. Or get complacent with they don't have no ambition. And now it's like, man, now I'm stuck living paycheck to paycheck. Now I'm stuck always having to check our balance to see if we have enough. Always got to worry about overdrafting in our bank account. Our, uh, when just one car breaking down and we don't even know how we're going to fix this transmission. We don't know how we're going to get the new, like, it just one little uh, medium bump in the road and oh like right now you know praise the almighty if my car got wrecked right now like total i could go buy a new used one a little beater maybe two three thousand dollars four thousand dollars we could i'll prefer not to because i try not to i try my best not to depend on my wife for anything you know as a man i wear my thorns and thistles by the sweat of your brow I wear me working for my family as a badge of honor. That's my curse. The Almighty curse me and I'll bear my, I wear that as a badge of honor. I do not depend on my wife to take care of my family. I didn't come in this marriage to do that. And I wear it as a badge of honor. I try my best not to. Sometimes she's there like the virtuous woman. She's there and she helps out. Sometimes I'm down. Construction gets slow. I got sick, whatever stuff out of control happens. She's there. Bam. That's what she's for. You know, she's a helpmate. But I, I'm not saying that to brag, but we should be in a position to where we're always growing every year. We are not me, uh, true Hebrews United people in true Hebrews United. We do not waste weeks. We have weekly meetings. We don't waste months and we don't waste years. You know, hopefully as we grow that the next generation will have that hustle. When you push that hustle on people, you women out there, you men out there, you only have a few good years. Use those years to the best of your ability. And I'm not saying you go soft once you're 50, 60 years old. You can still do stuff. You just may not have the 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 muscle. You know, maybe some stuff is uh, laborious. And by the time then, you got other people. You're paying to get stuff done, and you're still making moves. You're still making moves. A lot of you guys could apply yourself online. There's a lot of things you could do online. You can make money from home and or there's a lot of schooling out there. There's a lot of opportunity out there. Use that. Uh, use that opportunity. And so, yeah, I hit with a couple of scriptures and I'm really just want you guys to consider a hey, along with the stress. A lot of this stress is taking away your good years, along with the good years is apply yourself while you're young. Enjoy the youth. Enjoy while you have that go get it. There was a time when you came out of high school and you had all these dreams. Man, I want to do this. I want to be this. I want to be this. And then you talk to them like 30 years later. Man, uh, I'm too old for that, man. Or I'm too old to learn something new or. It's too late. I used to have that mindset. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm a journeyman now. When I was in San Diego, I was making 31, 41 bucks an hour. I came up here because I make way more. But so I came up, I came and, and you're like, man, I'm a journeyman. Y'all, it's too late for me to switch trades. Who says that's what that, that, that I'm stuck? You know, I put that in my head. Our society has put that in your head. Well, just because you get 30, 40, 50, that you cannot try something new or you cannot do something on your side. Like we're doing the Airbnbs. I mean, before the Corona hit, that has nothing to do with it. Don't matter how old you could be 70 years old and rent out a place and make money doing Airbnbs. Like there's things out there you could do. There's people that rent out places and just Airbnb out, out the rental. They just furnish it. You could do that in the States. You could do that out. You find a place super cheap. You rent it out. Airbnb. Maybe the rent 600 bucks a month. You rent it out for 60 bucks a day. 10, day, 10 days covers the rent and then the rest is the profit, whatever. You know, so. I mean, really go out there, use your youth. Don't waste your good years. Apply yourself. Don't let bad habits affect your walk with the most high and don't let bad habits affect your future. The almighty, and I'm going to finish up, the almighty could only bless the works of your hands if you put your hands to the plow. You men out there, you're not putting your hands to the plow. You're content with this little lame job 
this garbage job that's not getting you ahead in life and you're not putting your hands to the plow. So what is he blessing you with? What is, how is he going to bless the works of your hand if you're not putting your hands to do it? Get up there. Quit being lazy. Figure out, write down three or four things you want to do, three or four things you're good at, three, whatever. Figure out what's something you could do on the side. Have more than one source of income. If your job is your only source of income, then you're not doing too hot. That cannot be your only source of income. You should be able to have something, even if you just do work on the side. If you're a mechanic, do mechanic work on the side. If you're a painter, do painting work on the side. Say you're a painter, but you get your own cars and say, hey, only uh, Sundays only painter or something. You only do work on Sundays or something. You go out. I did a moving company on the site while I was a journeyman. We had a moving company on the site. We had more than one source of income and I was selling supplements and training people on the site. So go out there and get it. You know, don't waste your good years. So hopefully that helped you out. And uh, I had a couple of scriptures. Tomorrow will be being an overcomer and I will have more scriptures for that. This all ties in together because, uh, you know, not wasting your good years is ties into being an overcomer because you will have obstacles. So we'll deal with that. But hopefully this is a help. Shalom. It is better to control yourself. OK, cool. Amen. So is there any more things? Comment. All right, yeah, that's it. All right. I appreciate you guys. That's on. Yeah, I'm on a little early more than normal. Tomorrow will be. Um, we'll make it. I get off at one thirty. Maybe at three o'clock my time. So I think it'll be four o'clock. Sister Whitney and Natash shut Parak's time. And I think it'll be six o'clock the Hebrew one's time. So I'll be doing that uh, all throughout the week uh, until the last day. Yeah, even the last day I'll be doing that. I'll probably do 1030 the last day because it's a high Sabbath. So that Thursday thing will be that Thursday or that Friday. Yeah, I think it'd be like that Thursday. So with all that said being done, keep standing. Don't drop standards. Shalom.